Hey everyone, my name is Riley and this video is a review of the ConvertKit email marketing software. We will be taking a look at ConvertKit pricing and features and comparing it to some other email marketing tools to figure out if ConvertKit is the email platform that you should use. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to ConvertKit is the pricing and how much it is going to cost for this email marketing tool. Now, as a comparison, when we are talking about price, I want to compare this to MailChimp, which has the best marketing and is probably the most popular email marketing tool, and MailerLite, which is the email marketing software that I personally use and the one that I recommend. So if we compare this at, let's say, 5,000 subscribers for each of these tools, and I just put this in right here, you can see that with ConvertKit, we are going to be paying $79 per month for the cheapest plan, which is Creator. On MailChimp, you can see for the standard plan, we would be paying $75. But for MailerLite, and this is one of the main reasons I use and recommend this tool, it is pretty much like half the price. Like we are going from ConvertKit at $79 per month, MailChimp at $75 per month, to MailerLite, which is only $35 per month. So that is the first thing, it is the pricing, and it is that ConvertKit is very expensive for an email marketing tool, especially compared to some of the other tools on the market. The last thing that I want to mention in the pricing section is you might be seeing these free plans and these free trials. You can also get this on MailerLite and MailChimp. And if you do want to sign up to any other of the email marketing tools that are mentioned in this video, then I will leave affiliate links down in the description and using those links will allow you to get the best deals and discounts possible. With pricing out of the way, let's now take a look at the features that we get on ConvertKit. Now, there are two fantastic features that I really like with ConvertKit that you don't get with any other email marketing tools. Now, these are, if we go up to grow right here, they have this creator network. So this is something that I find really cool. What you can do in the creator network is you can essentially find other people who are also in the creator network and you can recommend each other's email list. So you would find somebody on the network to partner with and then they would send emails to their email list telling their subscribers to subscribe to your email list and then you would return the favor and message your email list and tell your subscribers to subscribe to their email list. This is only really going to work and is only going to be useful if you have a newsletter. Like if you are running an email list, let's say you are selling a fitness product and you are going to be using your email list to sell this. Well, you don't want to be recommending other fitness coaches email list because that would potentially lead your email list to buy their product. So as I say, it's only really going to work if you have a newsletter, but if you do, it's a fantastic feature. Then leading onto this, a second thing that is related to this creator network is if we go up to earn, we have paid recommendations right here. So what you can do in this section is once again, you can recommend people from your email list to subscribe to another person's email list. And for this, you will get paid instead of getting subscribers in return. So as an example, let's say that I have a newsletter and I have 1000 people that I get on average new subscribers per month. We can then fill in the rest of this data and it's going to give us an estimated calculation of if this data is correct, how much additional money can we make by recommending our subscribers to other people's email list. So those are just two cool features that I found inside of ConvertKit that no other email marketing software is going to offer. However, these are definitely not the most important features inside of an email marketing tool. And secondly, they are only going to be relevant if you have a newsletter. Let's now move on to the actual creating and sending of an email inside of ConvertKit. And in my opinion, this is another weakness for this software. If I go to send right here, and I just go to send a broadcast. I just want to send an email to my list. And I go to new broadcast right here. These are the templates that we get with ConvertKit. As you can see, they are okay, I guess. There are just not that many to choose from and they are not super professional. Whereas if we go to MailerLite, for example, looking at the templates, we can see a clear night and day difference between the quality in the templates that we are getting right here on MailerLite compared to what we are going to get on ConvertKit. With the ConvertKit templates, as I said, they are certainly not bad, like they are okay, but we just don't get anywhere near the amount of choice or quality that we are going to get from something like MailerLite or even MailChimp. With that being said though, let's go in and click into one of these templates and we are brought into the editor right here. 
Now, what I would say about the ConvertKit email editor is it is probably the easiest email editor to use out of any email marketing tool that I have tested is just a little bit limited. So as I say, this is very simple. If we want to change text, we just click into the text, we can change the text. If we want to change the image, we can click into images and upload them. We go back out here, we can add a background image, we can add a background color, but there is just not any set elements that we can add. What I would say about MailChimp is MailChimp is, it's better than ConvertKit, it's just not as good as MailerLite. If I go to MailerLite, and it really sounds like I'm trying to sell you this email marketing tool, but I promise I'm not. It's just the best one by far that I have found. Because if I start with a blank template right here, look at all of these additional sections that we have. We can add straight sections right here. We just drag and drop them in. And now we can add images and text underneath. We have individual elements that we can add. If we want to add like multiple buttons, if we want to add links like this, we can go down to special and we can add like signatures. We can add accordions, we can add countdowns, image blocks, three feature highlights. If you are selling e-commerce, we can list your e-commerce product right here. And as you can see, like just with these sections and the way that we edit everything here, this is a lot better than the email marketing tool that we are seeing on ConvertKit. Now, I don't mean to hate on ConvertKit too much because it is a fantastic tool, but for the pricing that we see with a tool like ConvertKit at almost $80 per month compared to MailerLite, which is actively a better tool and is also less expensive, I just don't really recommend signing up to this email marketing tool. And then the final thing that I am going to show you in this ConvertKit review is the automations that we can create. So we can go into automate and then visual automations. And this is how you go through and set up an email marketing autoresponder. In my opinion, this is something that ConvertKit does extremely well. The templates right here show you how to use this automation section fantastically. And what I would recommend is if you have never set up an email automation before, go to the template section, click on preview on all of these and just look how they work. So if we take a look at the release a new album right here, we can see that we have two different sections where people would enter in to this automation. So the first is if they sign up on the album release landing page, or if they are in one of our other automations and they get tagged with album release, then they will also start on this automation. So the first thing that we do is we send a warm up. So this is a sequence of emails that let the subscribers know when the album will be released. Then we have a release date in here. When the release day happens, we are going to send album release emails and then we can track if they have listened to the album. If they have, then we give them the track of have listened. So if you remember right up here, when they are added to this automation, one of the things is if they are tagged. So this is how you can tag people. We can basically track if they have done a specific action, then we can add a tag and add them into another automation just like this. So that's that automation. We can go through, run a paid newsletter so we can have a look at this. So people enter in when they have subscribed and signed up through the landing page. Then they get a welcome and pitch. They get to see behind the scenes. They get a paid music letter welcome. And as I say, I would just recommend going down here, checking these out. And then when you do want to create one yourself, you can either use one of these templates or you can start from scratch. So we would just go in, we can start building, choose the first thing. We can add the event right here, and then we can go down and fill in with the rest. So the first thing is an email sequence. We go through and add that, and we can set that up right there. I really do like that about ConvertKit, how they have automation set up. I think it's one of the only things on the software that they do extremely well. I mean, if we compare this to MailerLite, we can see that they pretty much do the same thing. MailerLite is not better in this area, but it's not worse either. We can go through and take a look at these templates right here, what all of these templates are going to do. And once again, if this is your first time setting up an email automation, I would recommend going through here and just taking a look at these. So that is my ConvertKit review. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, take it easy.